You are watching a master at work. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today we are looking at the Rat Rig V Minion. It's the new 3D printer from Portuguese company Rat Rig. Thank you very much to those guys for sending this to me. It's an absolutely awesome looking machine, and I'm uh, very, very much looking forward to building this. And that isn't the end game just to build a 3D printer. We're also then going to be installing this inside of a new robot that we are currently designing. So it's going to be crazy cool. Uh, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit a little like. Comments go in below. Also, a quick shout out to Big Tree Tech for sending me the brand new SKR 2.0 board, which is going to be going in of this printer and also thanks again to polymaker for sponsoring my content with uh, this petg in this fabulous teal cutter so this is all pre-printed stuff that i've done while i was waiting for this so let's get straight on into the build here we go Let's dive into the V-Minion. It's been no real secret that the brains of the Rat Rig creative team have been working hard to take their product to market. We were talking about this back last year when the V-Core 3 was successfully launched. Several special numbered editions were shipped in January this year and I've seen some impressive photos of the produced prints. This modestly sized but powerful printer comes at three price points. Mechanical, essential and full. With the prices ranging from €199.99 to 299 99 euros and 549 99 that gives the end user flexibility on this impressive open source platform in this instance rat rig have actually sent me the mechanical kit so i'll be adding my own hardware to the build it's a good job too because eventually this 3d printer will be installed into a large scale robot for events that are planned later on this year onboard power will be supplied from the robot which will mean that the power supply that i'm installing right now might not actually be used long term or could be powered as a static or a battery. The essential kits state the use of the AVA system friendly Bontec LGX Lite as well as the Fatus Dragonfly BMG. If you don't already know about the AVA and AVA 2 system, it's a seriously impressive hybrid mounting system for not only rat rig printers, but it blends a number of extruders and hot ends together, making the perfect combo for your chosen hot end setup. In my case, which isn't unusual, I have opted for a slice engineering hot end and this time it's going to be the copperhead, along with an orbiter extruder, which I had sitting around for a while. My alternative to this would be the listed Bontec LGX Lite, but it's a good opportunity to show off an alternative product. On the AVA2 side, all you need to do is select your config and start printing. This is pretty much the same on the RatRig site. Selecting the files and printing tab gives you the CAD, recommended print settings, and even details on printed parts and orientation. All the information that you are going to need is already on the RatRig website, and help is in easy reach on the Discord server. It's clear that RatRig love their awesome green color, but one of my most favorite brands, Polymaker, and the Teal Poly Lite PETG, 
I think was going to work great for this project. Incidentally, Polymaker's print settings, mechanical properties and thermal properties are listed on their website. I have found this to be very useful when selecting the right filaments to use on my various projects. On my past projects, of course, I've insisted on using Slice Engineering's Mosquito Magnums as I wanted high heat, fast flow rates and maximum efficiency across the V-Core 3 system. Because the V-Minion is considerably smaller, I was keen to work with the Copperhead, which boasts reduction on print jamming, huge temperature ratings and the key of eliminating heat creep with an awesome design and superior build quality. This is the most cost effective route from Slice, sharing the bimetallic heat break, which is an important factor for many 3D printers that tend to suffer with heat creep. Again, with the AVA system, it leaves the choice very much up to you, and it's a unique offering on this range of printers. In my opinion, Ratrig have once again successfully delivered a product that I personally didn't think that I needed. Having said that, of course, this little printer has really grown on me, and I found this build in particular very enjoyable. The open source elements to the Ratrig ethos I find very interesting. The adaptability and powerful selection of hardware components means that you can have it your way, color, spec, enclosure, and set your budget. The 180 by 180 by 180 build volume, although on the smaller side, does sit inside a range of printers, such as the Prusa Mini, the King Room, KP3, and of course the Creality Ender 2 Pro. The price point on the V-Minion as a full kit does sit slightly higher than the ones that I've listed. However, due to the components used being premium, I do feel that the price point is actually spot on. So again, this is the mechanical kit. So let's look at the costings here. So this bundle includes only the frame, the mounting hardware, and the motion hardware. You'll need to add all the electronics, including the bed heater and all the 3D printed parts. So that's working out. The V-Minion kit comes in at £137.07. And from memory, I think the import tax was around about £30. Slice Engineering, Copperhead, including the heater and for Mister and the auxiliary parts, comes in around about £151. The Meanwell 24 volt power supply cost me another £31.99. The LDO Orbiter was £20.58. You can also order that from the Ratrig website. The Flex Pate was around about £10. Now, the custom V Minion heater, which is 160mm by 160mm, it's a 24 volt system using 180 watts. That comes in at £20, also can be found on the uh, Ratwig website. Uh, Big Tree Tech SKR2 plus the drivers came in at £60. The Pi 3 is around about £34. And you're going to need one kilo of at least PETG. In my case, it's going to be the Polymaker stuff. That is a further £25. The accelerometer, which I have put in but haven't set up yet, is just a mere £3. And finally, the LDO stepper motors came in at £40.74. So the build sits right up around the £565 mark because, hey, I wanted it my way. And that's versus the £411 for the full kit using alternative components on the Rat Rig website. So is it worth it? 100% yes. What sets this printer apart from others is mainly the software and, of course, the parts used. This printer, like the V-Core 3, now runs Rat OS, which is a huge advantage to modding and tweaking as it can be done live from your computer. As behind the scenes here, we are, of course, running Clipper. The introduction of the Super Slicer has also been a welcome step up to helping end users find their feet with this total package. It will, at the very least, get you to the point where you'll get good results before further tuning your rig to the components that are used. So in areas like flow, retraction, POD tuning and input shaping. Input shaping of course is pretty much unique to Clipper and only really seen on printers like the Voron and the Ratrig V-Core 3 uh, and other printers that are currently using Clipper but it is quite a unique feature nonetheless. So being completely honest here the only thing that I'm not a huge fan on is the companion piece which holds the motherboard, PSU and Pi. This is very reminiscent to me of the old CR10 printers with the side box that eats away at space around the printer. I recently did catch a post about this and Ratrig explained that it was the best choice at the time for design as building these elements into the framework overcomplicates the build and this is a fair point but within days I've already seen several community changes on the mounting system which I do expect to adopt in the coming months before this is mounted into the robot that I'm working on. So we are back two weeks later. The v minion is now finished and everything is working as planned. There were a couple of hiccups, unfortunately, along the way, though. I was actually sent a 12-volt Meanwell power supply instead of a 24-volt. Uh, that was, unfortunately, a mistake on the vendor's behalf. But I then decided that I was also going to buy two new 24-volt Meanwell power supplies, which don't have any fans in them, which I will probably use on a different build because the Meanwell now is in and working and... I don't need to mess around with that. The other thing that I had a major problem with was unfortunately the Big Tree Tech SKR2 board. And what happened with that is something went 
drastically wrong. And uh, despite the fact that, uh, you know, I studied the uh, diagram and I made sure I was plugging everything in the right way, um, something went wrong. And Big Tree Tech Support actually were very, very good. They've sent me another SKR2 board. I had to bridge the fuse at one particular point to try and get around the issue, but it just wasn't having any of it and it wasn't going to work. So I ordered another one on eBay. They're sending me another one. And I also ordered a third one from Big Tree Tech as well. And I'll probably slam that into a Creality S5 and do a major upgrade on one of the larger printers in the future. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But what I will say right now is the V Minion and everything that's gone into this particular build has blown me away. And it's not just been the build. The print quality is outstanding. And remember, this hasn't even been tuned yet. I've literally built it switched it on and I've been running test prints. Printing now is a vase by Clockspring and as you can see via this print and this is in real time by the way the print does look pretty damn near perfect and looking on Ratrig OS the speed on varying parts is running nicely on average between 60 millimeters per second and 140 millimeters per second and this print is estimated to be around about a 10 hour print. So it's running pretty fast and I think I'm going to have to utilize this 3D printer for true rapid printing on the smaller component robotic parts because it is just that good. Talking of print quality, if you want to see any of these close up and personal, check out my Instagram at the Real Sam Prentice for more detailed prints. But check out first and foremost the Wexter STL. This is C3PO. Actually, I printed this incorrectly. This was actually done in vase mode, um, so with no support. Uh, and it came out all right, actually, uh, believe it or not. But uh, I'm quite happy with it. There's a few little indentations there where obviously there's no internal support inside of that whatsoever, uh, which was a bit of a nightmare. And next, of course, the Stormtrooper. Um, I didn't quite realise that the gun was off of the ground. So as that went to print, of course, that went down the tubes as well. And what I'd say to take away from that is, well, at least it's still printed, right? So I think that's great. So finally, the Benchy. This was one of the first test prints that I did. You'll see a very, very slight, like a sheen difference. Um, and that is where I whack the speed right the way up um, to see what it would print like. And uh, so once again, actually a very nice print all round. Now it is time for a competition. Hang on a minute. This literally has just finished. I can hear it cracking off the bed. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that! Oh wow, look at this. This is insane. So this is a clock spring print. Literally just finished. I couldn't have timed that any better. Um, but yeah, check that out on my Instagram. So we are giving away not one, but two V Minion mechanical kits. Thank you very much to Rat Rig for uh, not only just sending me this, but also working with me to make this competition work. I am now celebrating over 4,000 subscribers. So thank you if you have managed to hit that subscribe button. It does help the channel out and it does help me progress. And I love giving stuff away as well. And I really, really like making content like this. I especially like making those kind of insert videos, um, dark and mysterious stuff and setting fire to stuff and all that kind of crazy stuff. So please, please hit that subscribe button and make this work. And, you know, hopefully I'll be able to put more content in and hopefully you'll enjoy it as well. So what I've done throughout this entire video, I've put um, a couple of other YouTubers, either like effigies or their images into, uh, into the background of things. I'll give you an example. So what I'm looking to do is for you to name the YouTuber or their channel and tell me how many times that individual has popped up in the video throughout this one video so it's going to be a little bit of watching making sure that you've got attention to detail um, and then what i'd like you to do down the bottom in the description there'll be a google link and all you need to do is just fill out that information fill in your name let me know your email and then coming up at the end of april and i think it's the 29th of april i'm going to do a live stream and we're going to be giving this stuff away so there might be other prizes and things as well so make sure you're tuned in for that and about two weeks before i'm due to do that i'll put a link in and just make sure everybody kind of knows where it is and what's going on so what else have i got to do here right so name the youtubers name the channel name tag them if you can so if you do at whoever the name will be tag them in the comments as well so i know that you're there and you know it's kind of all working i think it, it might be a bit of fun just to sort of do this so share 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 if you want to share this please share it um like i said i do honestly love doing stuff like this i love giving away things and uh the more uh likes and subscribers and stuff i get the more i'm going to be able to do with the channel and um you know i don't need hundreds of printers i'm happy to give stuff away and you know all that kind of crazy stuff so thank you again to everybody the 29th is when we're going to be doing the date uh all the information is going to be below thank you once again to rat rig to polymaker to slice engineering and big tree tech without you guys this wouldn't be possible and of course thank you for watching and we will see you next time good luck with the competition don't forget everything's down in the bottom of the description and we will see you soon thank you for watching see you next time
So I'm so impressed with the V Minion. Oh God, it's been flawless apart from those little hiccups. So the part that I've just printed on the V Minion is for the Bowden tube connector and that's where the filament is gonna go and that's where the uh, plug is gonna go on to and then obviously the Bowden tube pops straight on into that. I don't know quite where I'm gonna locate this yet, but um, let's, uh, let's, let's jump straight into that. Okay, let's heat this up and uh, swap out the bone tube. Three, two, one. I mean, I've had a kind of few upgrades on the uh, on the system here, so we do have no focus, which is great. Come on then, here we go. Let's get some focus on this. <laughs> 